Good morning. I'd like to welcome all of you this morning as we've gathered once again for worship. Uh, hopefully all of you are wide awake. If you uh, stay up for the game last night, um, we'll try to keep everybody um, awake for at least for the hour. Um, but if you're uh, watching online with us this morning, we welcome you too. And as always, if you're new um, in worship, please use the, uh, the visitor's cards you're finding in the row and place them in the offering plate. Or if you're new online, please comment and let us know in the comments as you watch. But use this time now to prepare for worship as we share together in the time of the prelude. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your presence with us this morning. We have felt it as we've gathered together in your name and have come to worship you. And so we ask that as we offer our prayers, as we, as we uh, listen for your word, we ask that you would speak to our hearts, that would be, we would be blessed by sharing with you in this hour. And we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number 400, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. We invite you to stand as we sing together.
Please be seated and we'll uh, look forward to hearing from our hand chime choir as they share their anthem this morning. Turn to someone and greet. Uh, I'll stand up and turn to someone and greet each other this morning. Guys, take care.
Good morning. Did anybody recognize that song? <laughs> kind of, sort of. So, so what was it? Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Um, right. So, did you ever? I don't know if we sing Sunday songs. We don't really sing Sunday school songs anymore. So, um, that was a song that I actually used to sing when I was your age and younger in Sunday school. And we used to climb up in the sycamore tree and for the Lord he wanted to see and all the emotions that went with it. Um, so Zacchaeus, uh, we're talking about Zacchaeus today. Yeah, Zacchaeus, you come down. Um, um, so what do we know about Zacchaeus? Anything? Okay, good. So I brought a, 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 check, a, a checklist with me. Um, so Jesus, so let's talk about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a, a guy who um, heard that Jesus was coming to town. And um, he wanted to see Jesus, but what we, Zacchaeus was sure, right? So um, he actually, at the end of the story, became a friend of Jesus. So um, let's think about Zacchaeus for just a little bit. Um, in order to be a friend of Jesus, do you have to be at a certain height? No, because Zacchaeus was short. In fact, the story tells us that, um, that the crowd was so large that there were people like me standing there trying to see Jesus, and Zacchaeus was probably... Um, well, he was short. We don't know exactly how tall he was, but he was short. He was a, um, and he, uh, he couldn't see Jesus. And so he climbed up in a sycamore tree, um, which was a tree that, that grew in Jesus' land, where, where Jesus was in the Holy Lands. And, um, and he wanted to see Jesus. So um, the next question is, uh, do you have to have any certain job to, to be a friend of Jesus? No, right? So um, do we know, what was Zacchaeus? Anybody know what he was, what he did for a living? He was a tax collector. Um, he, he collected people's taxes. Now, um, in those days, just like today, nobody really liked the tax collector because you had to give him money. And a lot of times it was a very, it was a very large amount of money. Um, so that leads us to the next question is, do you have to be popular to be a friend of Jesus? No. People hated Zacchaeus. Um, they, they couldn't stand him. They, they wanted nothing to do with him. Um, in fact, they probably crowded him out. Um, knowing that he wanted to see Jesus, they probably intentionally gathered around Jesus so that he couldn't see, which is why he had to climb the tree. And um, so he wasn't popular. He cheated people. Um, he collected more taxes than what he was supposed to collect. And they were allowed to do that because it was tax collectors just did that. Nobody really could, could stop them from doing it. Um, so he was not well liked. So you don't have to be a certain height to be a friend of Jesus. You don't have to have a certain job to be a friend of Jesus. And you don't have to be popular to be a friend of Jesus. Um, so what did Zacchaeus have to do to be a friend of Jesus? Yeah. Nothing. Well, it, it, not quite nothing. It, it wasn't like he didn't have to have any qualifications, but he had to do one thing. So he climbed the tree to see Jesus, and as, as um, Mrs. Stanton was kind of saying from the song, um, when Jesus saw Zacchaeus up in the tree, he said, Zacchaeus, come down, because I'm going to your house today. Now, he didn't, Jesus didn't wait for Zacchaeus to say, hey, Jesus, come to my house, because Zacchaeus probably wouldn't have done that, because he, he, was, he would probably think that, you know, he, there's no way he's going to want to come to my house, because I'm, everybody hates me, um, I'm a tax collector, um, and probably didn't care that he was short, but... Um, you know, he just wanted to, to see Jesus, but he didn't think that Jesus would want to come to his house. But Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house. Now, Zacchaeus could have said, no, 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 you're not coming to my house. But that's not what Zacchaeus said. He said, okay, Zacchaeus, you come to my house. And so that was the one thing that Zacchaeus had to do to be a friend of Jesus. He had to, he had to welcome Jesus and invite him and allow him to come into his home. And so um, when, he, when he got there, um, there was a conversation that they had as they where they were, they were talking, and as Zacchaeus became a friend of Jesus, does anybody know what he did? He said, um, if, I, if I cheated anybody, I'm going to make it right. I'm going to pay them back. And he fa in fact, he said, I'm going, to, I'm going to pay back four times what, what I stole from anybody. And that's way beyond what he would have had to do, but that was kind of his response, that he was so happy that Jesus was his friend, that Jesus welcomed him um, that, or rather that Jesus wanted to come to his home and he could welcome him there, um, that, that Zacchaeus changed. His life was changed. He was no longer the same person. He wasn't going to cheat people anymore. He wasn't going to take advantage of people anymore. Um, he was going to treat people like he, wanted to be, he would want to be treated. And so um, 
thinking about that today, how do we welcome people? How do we welcome people? How do we welcome, how do people welcome Jesus into their home? How would you welcome Jesus into your home if he said, I'm coming to your house? Or what do you think, some things you could do? Yeah. Okay, invite it and say, yeah, that'd be great. Jesus, come, come, you know, come to my house. What else can we do? What can we actually do today to welcome Jesus, maybe? Yeah. Pray. Pray. Talk, to, talk to Jesus. That, and invite him to be a part of our family life together. Um, what else can we do? Feed him. <laughs> Feed him? Okay, yeah. Um, so Jesus said, if you welcome, if you, if you help somebody who's in need, it's like you're helping me. So we could, we could help somebody who's in need um, by offering food. Um, we could, we could um, read the Bible. We can, you know, say a prayer at the table before and, and thank God for our food. So there are all kinds of ways that we can do things that would welcome Jesus into our home, just like Zacchaeus did. And the promise that, that Zacchaeus found to be true was that when he did that, his life wasn't the same. As I said, he was changed completely. And so when we welcome Jesus into our homes and when Jesus is a part of our family life together, we're not the same either. Our lives are, are changed and uh, we become the people that God wants us to be. So I hope you'll find ways to welcome Jesus whenever you can, um, whether it's you know, prayer, um, helping somebody who's in need, whether it's you know, praying, saying thank you for a meal, reading the Bible, um, whatever it may be, treating others the way you want to be treated. Um, there are all kinds of ways that, that you can welcome Jesus. And when you do that, as I said, your life is different and it's pleasing to God. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you that we don't have to have certain jobs. We don't have to be popular. We don't even have to look a certain way in order for Jesus to want to be our friend. And so we thank you for your friendship. We thank you for sending him to give his life, to show his love uh, so that we could know you. And so help us to welcome Jesus into our homes, into our hearts, in whatever ways we can, so that our lives will be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, okay, thanks for listening. Thanks for your help this morning. So I don't know if the senior choir is going to sing Zacchaeus or another anthem, but they're going to come to share their anthem with us now.
matter, Lily, if one of you would uh, get the prayer book uh, for us. We'll update our prayer list. We also have uh, some prayer requests that have come in through the week. Um, the first is that uh, Ted Dorothy is going to be having surgery, his, his surgery scheduled for February 7th, so as he waits out, we're going to keep uh, Ted in our prayers that um, his surgery would be, be effective and that um, the doctors would be able to bring some healing and, and help uh, to him. We also um, are asked uh, by the Eckert family uh, to keep in our prayers the Campbell family. Um, the Campbells are good friends, are friends of theirs, um, and their four-year-old son, Bo Campbell, uh, passed away um, uh, having suffered um, ependom ependymoma, which is a rare form of brain cancer. Thank you. So please keep uh, the Campbell family in your prayers. Carol Lewis uh, requests prayers for uh, her daughter-in-law's mother, uh, Doris Cappy, who fell and fractured her pelvis. So we want to keep Doris in our prayers. Um, Lisa, then some uh, three praises that came in. Uh, first, Lisa Rue uh, received a, a great report from her eye doctor. Uh, many of you know that Lisa is uh, struggling with uh, glaucoma. And uh, the report that she received related to that was that it has been slowed down and uh, if things continue the way they are, she may not lose her sight. And so she was thrilled uh, about that news, as you can imagine. And she said, so please uh, say a prayer of praise uh, uh, for that news, and then also remind people to go to the eye doctor regularly because, um, you know, it's a glaucoma, it's a, it's, she called it a thief that sneaks up. And so um, you have to stay on top of it. So she said, if I can help somebody uh, with that, that's, um, through my experience, that's what uh, she would hope to do. Um, also, a praise uh, that uh, Kelsey Eckert uh, qualified for the Junior Olympics in swimming. Um, so that's, uh, that was great news. And uh, also, Fred White. Uh, happy birthday, Fred. Um, it is his uh, 76th birthday. And uh, there are uh, treats in the uh, Dorian Coffee Fellowship to celebrate that. So we thank his family for sharing them. And Fred, happy birthday. Um, there are no other requests in the book besides, uh, well, Fred, Fred is in there, but I had that one written down too. Um, so those are the requests that we have this morning. So we'll um, join our hearts together now as we, uh, as we pray. Gracious God, we thank you that we can enter into your presence and know that we indeed stand on holy ground. We come at times with fear and trembling, knowing that we are not worthy to stand in your presence. And yet, you welcome us, you receive us, you want to be our friends, just like in the story of Zacchaeus. And so while we stand in all of your holiness, we also know that you hear us and you want to respond to our needs. And so this morning we offer up these requests that have been shared we pray for, first of all, and give thanks for the joy and the celebration that we can, um, th that we shared this morning, of good news of, from doctors, of, of, um, of swimming success, of um, birthdays, and so we just lift up all the celebrations. We thank you again for being the source of our joy, for being the one who pours these good things into our lives. And so we give you thanks for all the ways in which you enrich our lives. But we also come with concerns for these needs that have been shared. There are those who are facing surgery, like TED and other procedures, tests that still have yet to be done. And so we just pray for guidance and wisdom and healing. For those who are or dealing with illnesses or with injuries from falls, we pray that you would sustain them and strengthen them as they heal. And we give you thanks again for doctors and nurses as they, as they share the gift of healing that you have given to them. We pray too for this family who has lost this little boy. We ask that you would sustain them and walk with them and comfort them. And we pray that 
all those who may be grieving would find in their friends and their, their, those who support them your presence. And as always, we ask that you would use each one of us to be instruments of your presence whenever we can be. We thank you that we can visit and pray and uphold those who are in need. And again, we give you thanks this morning for all the ministries of our church and for the ways in which we are able to share your love with others. We pray that you continue to sustain us and, and bless us as we do your work. We pray, too, this morning for our country and for its leaders. We ask that you would give them wisdom and grant them also willingness to follow your wisdom as they lead us. And again, we give you thanks for the freedoms that we have in this country that we can come and worship and pray and, and share together on Sunday mornings. We pray all these things in the name of the one who wants to be our friend, Jesus, our Savior, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now this morning we uh, continue to worship now as we offer our gifts and offerings as the ushers come to receive them. Gracious God, just as we have offered you the brokenness and strife in our lives and you created something beautiful out of them, we ask that you would take these gifts that we offer and use them to do your work. We ask that you would use them to bring relief and comfort and healing and to spread the good news of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen.
Our hymn of preparation this morning is 389, Freely, Freely. As you're seated, Lily is going to come and share our scripture reading with us this morning. The scripture this morning is Luke 19, verse 1 through 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. Uh, all who saw it began to grumble and said, he has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. The key is stood there and said to the poor, to the Lord, Look half of my position, Lord. I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to his house because he too is a son of Abraham. Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and have and to save the lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lily, for sharing our scripture this morning. So there's a, a saying that I know that uh, most of you have have heard: uh, "Nothing is certain, but death and taxes." taxes right. So, um, does anybody like taxes? Nobody? Okay. Um, actually, uh, you're not alone. Uh, nobody likes taxes. Nobody wants to have to pay taxes. And in fact, I just read recently that um, 
there is a move uh, in, uh, by the Republicans to do away with the IRS. And when I heard that, I was like, yes, that's, that's the best news I've heard in a long time, to do away with the IRS. Um, in fact, it's, uh, you know, the Fair, Ta Fair Tax Act has been introduced by Buddy Carter, Representative Buddy Carter from Georgia, and um, he would, is seeking to abolish the IRS. Now, as exciting as that may sound, um, you know and I know that there still has to be a way for, first of all, <laughs> I'll just say it's not going to happen, it probably won't, um, but uh, we also know that there has to be a way to fund the government. And so while it sounds exciting, um, instead of having the IRS, there would be a national consumption tax. And so there would still be a tax, and there would still be a way to fund the government, and so uh, we don't get off the hook that easily. But nobody likes taxes. Nobody, nobody wants to have to deal with taxes. In fact, um, I was kind of shocked at this, that um, basically they figure that we work, uh, for those who are still working, we work from January to April to pay the government, and in, May, in, in uh, the beginning of May is actually when we begin to pay ourselves. Um, so it takes that long, or that's how much the, the government takes in taxes. Um, and because we don't like tax collectors, or, or I'm sorry, because we don't like taxes, we don't like tax collectors. Um, and to prove it, uh, let me ask, what is your impression of the people from the IRS? When you hear that you know, they're getting in touch with you, or you have to call somebody from the IRS, or you have to call them, um, what do you think about them? Are you, you know, are you happy about that? No, you think that you know, they're, they're no good, nasty, blankety blanks, and they're out to get us. That's what you think about them. I mean, that's, that's what you know, most of us think about the IRS people. And yet most of them are probably just trying to make a living and are just you know, no different than, than you and I, but because of what they do, we don't like them. And um, no one has ever said to their son or daughter with tears in their eyes, oh, you'd make me so happy if you went to work for the IRS when you grow up. You know, we just don't do that. So enter Zacchaeus. We all are familiar with Zacchaeus. It's a story we've heard before. Chief tax collector of Jericho, uh, the one who everybody loves to hate because nobody likes the tax collectors. Very rich, uh, but can't buy any friends because nobody wants to be associated with him because not only is he a tax collector, he's a thief, and he steals from people. People hate him. And they dislike him so much that courtesy uh, is set aside when they see that he's this little short guy um, that wants to see Jesus, and they block him out so that, that he can't get there. He can't see Jesus because he's too short, and they're too tall, and he can't see around them. But Zacchaeus has learned in his life that if he's nothing, he's resourceful. I mean, he found ways to cheat people, so he can figure out how to see Jesus. He runs ahead and climbs up a tree, so that he'll be able to get a good look when Jesus comes by. And so high above the crowd, he, he crawls out on the limb to, to watch and to wait. And then the most amazing thing happens, something that he never would have suspected. Realized that he had no intention of, of encountering Jesus. He just wanted to see Jesus. He had heard about Jesus, and so he wanted to climb this tree and see. But Jesus stops at the base of the tree, looks up and says, Zacchaeus, get down here. Come down. Because, and hurry up, because I'm coming to your house today. I have to stay there. And you can hear the crowd. What? Why in the world is Jesus wanting to stay at Zacchaeus' house? He's a cheat. Doesn't he know what he does? Doesn't know, he know who he is, what kind of person he is? And why would they do this? To the the, go to the house of that nasty, low-life, no-good Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus is as shocked as anyone else in the crowd, but he manages to come down... And he, he talks to Jesus. And three things happen in this encounter with Jesus that brings salvation to Zacchaeus' house. First, Jesus proposes a relationship. Jesus says, hey, I'm coming to your house. It's an action that Jesus initiates. He didn't have to do that. He could have just had this you know, conversation with, Jesus, with, with Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, you know what you're doing is wrong. So, Zac, you need to get your life together, stop cheating people, and they could have moved on. But Jesus says, no, I'm coming to your house. Um, a, a, an initiated action of Jesus, unexpected, undeserved, and socially unacceptable, that shows that Jesus desires relationships with sinners. He was going the extra step, I'm coming to your house. You're going to welcome me into your house. And we're going to sit down and we're going to have a talk. It may have been what Paul had in mind when he wrote that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He reaches out to us first. 
And so that's the first thing that happens. It's this relationship begins to, to develop or becomes possible because Jesus stops to take time with Zacchaeus. The next thing that happens is that Zacchaeus promises to change. Reform is coming. He didn't say, okay, Jesus, yeah, come to my house, but you know, I'm, I'm still going to be who I am. I mean, I have to make a living. No, Zacchaeus says, no, I'm going to change. Half of my possessions I'll give to the poor. Now, probably most of those possessions he had were, were ill-gotten by, by theft, but nevertheless, he didn't have to do that. I'm going to give half my possessions to the poor, and then he says, if I cheated everyone, I will pay back four times what I've stolen. Now, that's way beyond, as I said to the, the children this morning, that's way beyond what would have been expected or required. But what it shows is the power of a relationship with Jesus. The relationship that Zacchaeus was developing with, with, with Jesus, the decision of Christ to stay in a house, has the power to set free all of us from even the worst of our habits and to give us a fresh start, which is what we've been talking about. It's the relationship with Jesus that transforms Zacchaeus. Now, sometimes we're scared of the strength of our sinfulness. I don't know about you, but if, if I know for me there are times when I've done things that I know are wrong and the guilt is pretty overpowering. And sometimes we feel powerless to change that. Sometimes we feel like, uh, you know, okay, now I've done it. There, there's no possible way that that can be forgiven. But if Jesus is coming to visit, he gives us the ability to know God's grace. And when we open our heart and life and our home to him, we get a fresh start and can be set free from even the worst of our habits, the very worst things that we could do. Lastly, the third thing about this story is that Jesus predicts or announces that redemption and salvation has come. Today, salvation has come to this house, Jesus says. And so he knows that Zacchaeus has made a fresh start. He has changed and begun to be reformed and transformed. The key to Zacchaeus' salvation is the relationship. It all starts with that, taking the time to get to know Jesus, to have that conversation, to begin to open up his home and his heart to Jesus. Now, we might wonder, you know, is relationship really all that important? Isn't it more about what we say and what we do rather than our relationship? Well, there's been a, a study that was done. They call it the Pennsylvania Paradox. It was uh, until about 1965, the people of Rosetto, which is a small town in the eastern part of the state of Pennsylvania, it's actually between Easton and Stroudsburg. I had to go look it up to see where it was because I wasn't sure where it was, but it's actually right in the eastern part of Pennsylvania between Easton and Stroudsburg. And they seem to be immune from heart disease. And they smoked as much as the folks did in nearby Bangor, which is the next town, and their lifestyle was not that much different than the people who lived in the town right next to them. They ate the same foods, they relied on the same doctors, they went to the same hospitals, and yet their death rate from heart attacks was significantly lower. Why is that? Well, Rosetto's most striking uh, distinction was that it had a very tight-knit social community. It was founded in 1882 by immigrants from southern Italy, and it was full of three-generation households that had strong commitments to church and to family. But when those traditions began to erode in the 1960s, so did Rosetto's health. When their relationships began to fall apart, their health began to fall apart. And by the mid-70s, residents there were as mobile and anonymous as other Americans. And then they were just as prone to heart disease as everyone else and anyone else. And what they called the Rosetto effect had vanished. Now, coincidence or tied to the relationships? Well, Dr. Dean Ornish argues in his book called Love and Survival, The Scientific Basis for the Healing and Power of Intimacy, the quality of our relationships can have profound effects on our health. And evidence suggests that people with, without close, durable ties to family and friends are at higher risk for everything from cancer and heart disease to ulcers and infections. And so relationship, love, intimacy, and relationship are at the root of what makes us sick or what keeps us well. The lack of those things causes disease, 
an abundance of those things helps us. So Zacchaeus' connection to the Lord began with, Je- with Jesus' desire to stay at his house and with Zacchaeus' welcome. His connection to his fellow townspeople began when he agreed to pay them back and to help them and to change. And when Jesus proclaims that Zacchaeus too is a son of Abraham, he's announcing that he has returned to a saving relationship, saying that he now has this relationship with me and he has this relationship with you, and so he is a son of Abraham. It's a saving, healing, and life-enhancing relationship with both God and the people of God. Salvation is the experience of losing yourself in the presence of God now and forever. If we're going to have a fresh start, if it's something that we, if we need to have a fresh start, then we have to be sure that our relationship with Jesus is in good standing. Salvation started when, Zach, when Jesus entered his life and when he responded by expressing the desire to reform himself. And for us, it begins when we welcome Christ into our hearts and into our homes and commit ourselves to a sweeping shakeup of our most deepest rooted bad habits and sins. Jesus says, come down, or look up, or welcome me. Let me come into your home. You'll have a fresh start. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that as we think about what it means to have a fresh start, that we can think about something as simple as a relationship with you. And so we ask that you would help us to examine where we are. We pray that this morning you would send your spirit to help us to strengthen the relationship that we have with you. And we thank you that when we have that relationship, we know that salvation indeed is in our house. We give you thanks for sending Jesus to make all of that possible. And we pray all these things in his name. Amen. We have a couple of announcements before our closing hymn, which is a celebration of the relationship that we have in Jesus. Uh, first of all, a um, reminder that our regular morning schedule, choirs will rehearse, children's choirs will rehearse after uh, worship this morning. Coffee Fellowship will be in the hall. And then um, at uh, um, 11 o'clock, Sunday School will start for all ages. Then tonight, um, our Youth Fellowship will meet at 6.30. And again, a reminder that all those who are attending the Midwinter Advance should be here tonight so we can sign up for uh, the classes and um, uh, the groups that we have. And there will be no Youth Fellowship next weekend because we'll be coming back from, um, from the Midwinter Advance. Uh, for those who are going on the Midwinter Advance, just a heads up, we'll be meeting at 5.15 on Friday night. So we invite you to eat dinner before we gather and then we'll be traveling um, to uh, refreshing Mountain for uh, the weekend. For those who are a part of the Pathways uh, group uh, that is forming, the Zoom meeting will be this Wednesday night from 7 to 9. When I get the link from conference, I will send it to all of you so that you can have that uh, for our meeting on Wednesday night. Uh, just an update on the offering envelope situation. We now understand that it may be the middle of February before we get them. Um, because there still is a, apparently a paper shortage, and I said we could use glue and pay our own paper and make our own envelopes at this point. But um, so we're looking into some other possibilities. But we'll keep you updated. But in the meantime, again, just you know, please use the envelopes that are there or um, on, on the prayer stand, prayer book stand, or uh, your own envelopes from home, or just uh, you know, mark it uh, in whatever way you're able. And then finally, uh, our senior choir is, oh, actually, no, not finally, um, one more after this. A uh, senior choir is um, ready to begin practicing their Easter cantata. Anyone who would like to join uh, for the cantata is welcome to come Thursday evenings at, um, at 8 p.m. downstairs. Uh, so if you'd like to join just for a short term um, to help out with the cantata, uh, please consider that. And if you have questions, you can uh, talk to any of the people that you saw standing up here in robes uh, singing uh, earlier in the service. And then finally, uh, the outreach uh, team is uh, accepting donations of, I should have announced this last week, it was in the bulletin, but I wanted to call your attention to it. Um, uh, The outreach team is accepting donations of new sweatpants and underwear for boys and girls 
uh, in pre-K, kindergarten up through third grade for the Mancho Township schools. Uh, this came as a request from the schools when we were um, in conversation with them about how you know, we could help. Uh, we had the mittens and gloves from the, uh, from, from the mitten tree that we shared with them and the nurses said that one of the largest needs that they had is for uh, underwear for, and, and sweatpants for children of those ages. Um, so if you would like to help out uh, the Mantua Township Schools in that way, uh, we invite you to bring those donations and place them in the box in the Northex and we'll be collecting them until the end of February. And this is kind of our Valentine's Day um, sharing love uh, with, with the uh, children of our, of our community. Please read all the other announcements that are in your bulletin and uh, mark your calendars accordingly. And we'll invite you to stand for our closing hymn, number 370, Victory in Jesus.
And God's people said, Amen. Amen. So one other quick announcement that I realized I just forgot. Um, we will be having a, a mission trip meeting on, uh, on Sunday, February 5th. Uh, for those who are interested in finding out more about um, the mission trip this summer, uh, we'll meet at about 10.50. It um, will be a very short meeting before Sunday school, after choir rehearsals and, and those kinds of things. So grab a cup of coffee and we'll um, talk about um, the possibility of that. But now, uh, we just sang about the victory that we have in Jesus. He seeks us and he, he sought us and bought us. He still seeks us and wants to live in a relationship with us. So go in peace to live into that relationship, to open your hearts and your homes to Jesus and go knowing that Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, will bring salvation to your home now and forever. Amen. Amen.